Hey everybody and welcome back to how to deploy a Laravel application to the internet. This is a start to finish series where we take people that from the absolute beginning, from choosing a host and setting up our server all the way through to configuring the technology stack and um, setting up Git and finally finishing it up in this video. This is the fourth and final video where we actually um, configure Laravel. Um, to run, uh, to deploy to the internet, basically. All right, so if you are ever wanted to learn how to deploy a project to Laravel, you're in the right video series. If you want to catch up on the previous videos, you may want to go back in the playlist and take a look at the earlier ones. Also, make sure that while you guys are watching this, that you have the guide open. This is a super long guide. I put a lot of work into this guide. By the way, if you guys do appreciate this guide, I would love it if you guys shared it um, You know, whenever people have any questions about basically how to deploy an application. This will be really, re I really want this to be very useful to a lot of people. Anyway, for those of you guys that um, are just jumping in, you may wanna take a look at this guide. It's gonna go through every step, including all the code that you need to do. And this will be really good while you're watching this video because you can copy and paste these into the terminal, the commands. And so this is the ultimate guide on deploying a Laravel app. And again, the link for this is at the very top of the description down below. Okay, so I let's, um for yeah, those that are just joining, we are way down at the bottom of this. We're already on the fourth and final video in our series. And um, in the first video, we talked about different types of hosts and we set up our virtual private server. In the second video, we set up our LAMP, LAMP stack, uh, the Linux, the uh, Nginx, the MySQL, and the PHP. We got them all configured. In the th last video, the third video, we set up um, our, we set up Git and some Git hooks. We also installed Composer and um, we transferred our files from our local computer up to our server using Git, which was awesome. And we just tested it to make sure it worked at the end of the video. So now we're in our fourth and final video where we're actually gonna configure Laravel, okay? So this video is gonna talk, now that we have the files, how do we actually get Laravel to work, okay? Because the server's ready to go, our files are on the server, so how do we go from here to get it working? So um, step number 14 is where we're gonna pick up in this video, so you can follow along starting at part uh, step 14. Okay, now in order to do this, you're gonna need to be SSH'd into your um, server. So make sure you're SSH'd into your server, and also now make sure you're inside of your Laravel project, okay? So for those of you guys that are just logging in, um, what you wanna do is just do SSH, root, and then the IP address or the domain name for your server. It's gonna launch you into our server through SSH, and then you're gonna CD into the Laravel folder, which is under, oops, um, it's under CD, var www laravel okay and now you know you're inside that folder and this is going to be good because and also make sure you already have composer installed because we did that in the last video and um, now that we have composer installed let's go through and run composer um, on our project okay because now we've got all of the files that we need in the side of our project so now we can run composer to um, get laravel working again composer is going to install all the the vendor files and the storage files and all those files that were missing and the reason that we we got a blank page when we came here, okay? So we need to run Composer. So let's do it now. So var www laravel, and now we're gonna run Composer, and we're gonna do Composer install to run um, to run Composer real quick. All right, and then before you click enter, <laughs> make sure you do, um, you're gonna wanna pass in a flag as well. So we're gonna do dash dash no dash dev. Okay, and then this is gonna tell it basically to skip over any of the developer dependencies. Really quick, before we click enter, I just wanna explain, well actually, no, let's go ahead and click enter. So we're gonna do dash dash, no dev, and then click enter. All right, and this is gonna start running Composer. Now, um, real quick, before I wanna go over to Adam and just explain why we do no dev. Let's move into our composer.json. And inside of composer.json, you can see that we have all these requirements for our project. And there's also a bunch of required slash dev. And these required dash dev requirements are requirements that we need, but only when we're developing the application. So things like, for example, Faker, this allows us to make um, model factories and stuff like that. You only need this on, you don't need this on the production server. You only need it when you're developing, right? Mockery, you only need this when you're um, on the production server. PHP unit for testing, you only need that on when developing. So all these here things here are for development only. We don't need them on the production server. And so these, we just, we're not going to load any of these. So when we say dash dash no dev, 
What it's actually doing is just installing these applications here, the ones that are required. So just keep that in mind when you're building your Laravel application, you're installing new packages, make sure you know, think about when you install it, do I need this only for development or is it gonna need it, is it needed for production as well? And if it's needed for production, move it up into required, into require, and if it's only for development, then you can move it down to required dev. So like, for example, if you're using like the Whoops um, error page handling and stuff like that, that can just go in dev. You don't need that on uh, production. All right, let's go back over to our terminal, just check on the status of things. Oh, it looks like it's done. Okay, nice. Um, one thing I'll mention here is you'll get these yellow errors. Um, all these are saying basically is um, it, it doesn't know how to handle the zip files and then it ends up just downloading it from source. So it, it, they're not actually anything to get concerned about. You're still getting the file. It just found, it tries to do it one way and then if it can't, then it tries the other way and get it directly from the source and that's what it does. All right, so now that we got this set up, what we wanna do is um, we're gonna to need to start working on some permissions. So Laravel does require a few permissions. So let's go ahead and just modify the permissions a little bit for our web server. The first thing we wanna do is change the ownership um, of the Laravel folder to, uh, to be owned by our um, Nginx server, okay? So we, to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do sudo um, change ownership or change owner not sure what it stands for, it's one of the two. Change owner and recursive, of course, and then um, we're going to do www-data, okay? And what this is basically saying is make the owner, and www-data is the web uh, web server, it, um, it's the web server user, basically. So we're saying, hey, let the web server group own the Laravel folder, and that's gonna give them extra permissions. Um, so we don't have to give like max permissions to some of these folders because they're gonna be naturally owned by the server. So when the server tries to do something, if they're owned by it, it's gonna have permission to go through and do it. So let's go ahead and do that. And um, so we're gonna do www data, and then we'll do, that's the, the user or the group, and then we're gonna tell it it can own the uh, var slash www slash Laravel. Okay, go ahead and click enter on that, and um, that's gonna change the ownership, so we'll be good to go there. Next, we're gonna wanna change the ownership of a specific, or the permissions of a specific file. So we'll do c, uh, sudo again, and then we'll do change uh, mod, which is gonna change the ownership, uh, the permissions, I mean, that's the word I was looking for. And we'll just tell it, oops, sorry, I'm getting confused. So we're gonna do, um, we will do recursive, and then we'll do 775, is what we'll give it permissions to do. And we'll do var, um, var uh, www slash Laravel slash storage, okay? So we're chained, we're giving it special permission inside of the storage directory. And um, the storage directory needs its own permissions because it's going to write um, and execute inside of those, uh, inside of that fo uh, file, inside of that folder, okay? So it has um, cache, it has the, that's where our image uploads are. Um, and things like that are inside the storage folder. So we're giving it special permission inside of the storage folder. So let's go ahead and click enter on that. And that's gonna give um, them permission over that. And um, that's pretty good. So now let's go through and let's just see. Now that it has ownership over the, um, over the, the uh, cache folder and stuff like that. Let's go ahead and just refresh and see what happens. And we'll see here now that we get an error. All right, so why are we getting this error? It says, whoops, looks like something went wrong. Well, this error indicates You'll, you'll notice basically that it looks like the errors you're used to, except it doesn't have any information. It doesn't tell you the error, what you're like, what is it supposed to be? There's no stack trace, nothing. So how are you supposed to figure this out? What's going on? What do we need help with? Well, we can do that through the logs, okay? So one of the things that's really nice is now that we gave it permission over storage, it now can write to the logs. So let's go and take a look at the logs real quick, just out of curiosity. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do nano, and we're gonna tell it to open up the log file. So the log file is inside of storage slash um, logs slash laravel.log, right? So let's go ahead and click enter here and it's gonna open up our um, file. So it says here, it's got the timestamp, it says it's in production, we got an error, 
no supported encryptor found. So that's the problem that we're having right now. That's why it's not, it's giving us an error is because there's no encryptor. And this has to do with your encryption key, which we're gonna get to in just a second. All right, so I just wanna show you guys that real quick. On um, That's basically what you have. You have these um, error pages now, or these log pages that you can um, see your errors. You're not gonna see them on the front end because you don't wanna share the error information with the world, right? You don't wanna stack trace that um, hackers could see um, you know, that gives them all the information on how your web, your, you know, your server is ran. So that's why it protects you and it just gives you a generic 404. Now you can customize this 404 error. You just need to go into your, um, in your resources folder under views, there's an errors page, there's an errors here, and you can just customize the errors.blade.do uh, 404.blade.php or 503. This is the one we're accessing right now and um, things like that. Oh, this is the, uh, this is the maintenance page. So um, anyway, so you can change those errors there if you want. Now um, back over to our project and over here. Let's, um, let's now, we actually need to change one more permission. We also need to change the permission of our cache file. Okay, and we know this because if we go to our Laravel project, laravel.com. Okay, so now we're going to go to our documentation. And then um, in the documentation, it says installing Laravel. And this is where you figure all this stuff out, right? So it says right here, um, for example, when installing Laravel, you should configure your web server's document web root to be the public directory, and then index.php is the doc directory that is served. And that's what we were setting up in the last video when we did Nginx, or the two videos ago, I guess. It also says here, make sure you configure your files with the config files. We'll do that in a second. And then it says to make sure you have your storage, um, it, uh, the storage directory has permissions, and then the bootstrap slash cache has um, permissions. So that's what we're gonna set up now. So let's do the same thing here that we did up here. Let's do sudo um, chmod, and we'll do um, recursive, and we'll do 775, and we'll do var www laravel um, bootstrap, and then um, cache. Okay, so we're gonna click that. It's gonna give permissions to that. So now we should be good to go as far as that's concerned. Now the next thing we need to do is set up our configuration files. And so um, let's go through and find our configuration files. Um, well, actually real quick, before we set up our configuration files, we're going to need to set up our database. So let's talk about, um, let's get logged into MySQL and let's um, set up a database that we can um, start, we can use for migrating to. And because we're gonna need those that database credentials when we do our configuration. That's why we wanted to kind of jump over and do that. So in order to access MySQL, we can actually just type in the MySQL command, okay, on our terminal here. Now you need to pass in a, a flag called u, which is a user. We're gonna be user is root. And then we're gonna do dash p, and then we, we pass in the password, okay? So in this case, um, you can do dash p, and then in um, single quotations, no space, so it's dash p and then a quotation, we're gonna write our password like that, and then click enter, and it's gonna log us into MySQL. And you can see we're on 5.7, all right? And then now that we're in MySQL, we can do show databases, and this will show all the databases in our system, which we don't really have very many. And um, now we can go ahead and create a new database. So I'm gonna do create database, and we're gonna call the database blog. That's just what I wanna call it, okay? And do a semicolon at the end, like that. Um, create, oh, I spelled create wrong. So let's go and make sure we do that. So um, create, there we go, click enter, and now it created the database. Now we know this because if we go up here and we do um, show databases again, we now have our blog database, okay? So we created a new database, and now all we need to do is put in our user and our password and our database name into our configuration files, and then we can run our migrations and start using the database. So what we're gonna do now is just do exit to, um, uh, to exit MySQL, and um, now let's work on our configuration files. So I wanna get that done before we did anything else. So let's work on configuring our configuration files. Okay, so one of the, most of the configurations are gonna happen in our .env file. The .env file is the environment file. You don't usually save this with your gitignore. Normally gitignore ignores the .env file. However, we want .env to be set up because um, 
the .env is basically, you're gonna have your own .env on your local computer and you're gonna have another .env on your production uh, computer. And we want all the settings in there so that you can then transfer everything else back and forth. And um, the .env is going to be um, basically what holds all of those settings. And you're gonna have different settings for your production server than for your local server. As an example, let's say on your local server, we don't actually need to send out real email, right? We don't, so we use something called MailTrap. That's what we use in, on this channel, at least. I use MailTrap. And MailTrap collects every email you send out, even if you send it to somebody else, it catches all the emails and lets you view them in a web browser, okay? So it lets you basically test emails and without accidentally sending them to users. So that's what MailTrap does. And so when I'm on my local computer, I don't wanna send real emails out to users. So I like to use MailTrap because we can catch all the emails and read them and test them like that. So on my local computer, I wanna use MailTrap. Well then, obviously when I push to production, now I actually want to start sending real emails, right? I don't want to use MailTrap anymore. So now um, we want to use real emails and we want to, um, in order to use the real emails, we need to put a real email uh, credentials inside of our ENV file, okay? And same thing goes with our database. We're going to have different database credentials between our local computer and our production computer. And so that's why we change these in the .env file. The .env file is um, basically what contains those changes between our production and our local, okay? They're gonna have different settings. So let's go through and let's take a look at this env file. So let's just real quick take a look at all of our files here under Laravel. Let's do an ls command, but we're gonna do ls-la. And this is gonna list all of the files, including the hidden files. For those of you guys that didn't know, these dot files at the beginning are hidden files. So if you just do an ls, for example, ls dash L, this will list all the files, um, but it won't list all of the hidden files. Notice those hidden files are gone. Okay, so let's do it the same way, but let's do it with the A at the end, and that way it shows our hidden files. You can see here that we have a .env.example, and we're gonna use this, this is the kind of our standard one. So we come back over to Adam here. You can see here that we have all of our mail, this is our env file for our local setup but it's hidden, see how it's like grayed out? That's because it's in the get ignore, so it doesn't get transferred up to the server. And that's because we don't want it being transferred to the server. Look at how we have this set to local and um, debug is to true. Debug is what you know gives us the error messages. We don't want these settings on the production environment, so we don't wanna transfer it up. We want it to have its own env file. So let's go ahead and create its own env file. And we can do that by taking the example env.example, which is on our server, and we can just use this as a template to create another env file. Okay, so let's go back to our terminal now, and we're gonna take this env.example, let's let's copy it and rename it to .env, and then we're gonna um, edit the .env to make some changes to our, our computer. So let's do that now. So make sure again that you're in var www laravel, and we're gonna now do, um, we're gonna copy dot oops dot env dot example all right so we're going to do that and then we're going to do a space and we're going to name it env okay so now if we run an ls um ls dash oops ls dash la um now if we run this you're going to see that we have um a, a normal env file so now let's go ahead and just do nano dot env to open it up in nano and now we can make some changes. So let's just start off by making, let's change the app environment to production. Let's change debug to true, or to false, I mean. We don't want debug uh, to be true. Debug is what sets whether you have the error messages or not, so, or the, the detailed errors or not. We, want, we don't want detailed errors, so we need to set it to false. Um, the app key is some random string. We're gonna set this in a moment, but we do need to set this because this is the encryption key that Laravel uses. And if you remember when we looked at our log file, it said that our encryption, uh, we, we need to reset our encryption key because we don't have one. And that's because we don't we have this one. So we need to reset that. Um, so then the database host is gonna be localhost. That's gonna stay the same. We just wanna put on our credentials for our database so we can use migrations and that Laravel can access the database and so forth. Now for the DB database, this is asking for the name of the database. So let's, um, let's uh, we made that new database called blog, remember that? So let's go ahead and set up blog, and that's gonna be the name of the database. That's why I wanted to create that, that first. Now the username is going to be, um, 
the username that you've created. Now, in this, um, we've we're just created root, okay? But it's possible you might create another data, another um, user for Laravel to use, and if so, you just give it that username. And then we've got our database password. So a database password is going to be um, whatever you set it to. So in my case, I set it to dev marketer. And then you can change any settings here. Um, we're just gonna keep the defaults. And then it's whatever though you've been using in your lo in local. And then we don't use Redis, so we're gonna skip over this. And then we're gonna have our mail, tr our, uh, mail driver. So this is where you would wanna customize it to your real mail server. Right now we're using MailTrap, but we don't wanna use MailTrap on production because then you'll never send out an email. They all get caught into your, <laughs> into your fake email box. So you wanna use something like, um, um, in this case, you would wanna use something like SendGrid or um, Amazon SES or um, something like that, okay? So you would, and you guys should be able to do this. I'm not gonna do a tutorial on this because you guys should be able to handle this. Oops. But basically like you would do like um, send, I don't know what it is, but it's sendgrid.com or something. They'll give you all these credentials on when you, when you go to your email service provider. You go there, they'll give you the port number, they'll give you the username, the password, and everything that you need to do, okay? So you just put that in here, and then you're done. So let's go ahead and save this. We're gonna do Control X, capital Y, enter, to save our file. And um, now we basically should be good to go. So we have all those environment files changed and um, set up. And so now what we need to do is we just need to um, change that one item that we didn't do, the encryption key, remember that? And in order to do that, we can just run an artisan command. So once again, make sure you're in your Laravel project when you do this, because artisan commands don't work outside of your Laravel project. But we're gonna do php artisan um, key generate, like this. And it's gonna generate a new secure key for our encryption. So you can see here, this is what my key is. Of course, yours will look a little different because it's unique, it's random. And um, now if we come back, let's go to nano.env um, to look at our env file that we just you know, created. And you can see now that, that it's automatically added it into our environment file, okay? So now our environment file has our new code. So everything should start um, working. So we're, we're definitely on the right path. Now there are a few more last changes to make, so let's go ahead and get those out of the way. These are gonna be inside of our config file. So what we can do is, and they're all inside of the config slash app. So let's go ahead and just open this up. So we're gonna do uh, nano config slash app dot php. Let's go ahead and open this up. And you can see here that there's this is where all the settings are stored. So let's just edit it down here. Um, the one thing we need to change is our URL. Um, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to um, change the URL to be um, our IP address or your domain name, whichever you're using. We're using an IP address, but you'll probably, oops, shoot. Um, I use using the number pad again. <laughs> I hate when I do that. Okay, so you're gonna use um, the IP address or you're gonna use the domain name for your for your web server. Okay, just like that. Um, but again, you'll probably have a domain name here. So that's what we have got for that. And then the last thing we need to change is our time zone. Now for me, the time zone is gonna be America slash Denver. And I just know that because I'm used to typing it in. But you can get your own, you can figure out what your own time zone is by just going to PHP time zones. And in the PHP manual, um, here it is, list of supported time zones. Um, you're gonna find your own time zone, okay? So just choose your country or continent or whatever region, I guess this is. Um, in my case, like I would click America and then I would find the correct one. So for me, it's Denver's the closest time zone. So then this is the exact string you wanna do, okay? So like, for example, if you're Argentina, San Juan, you wanna copy this exactly this way, okay? And then paste it inside of um, your ENV, or sorry, paste it inside of here, okay? So that's where you're gonna get your time zones. And again, on the um, the link for this is in the guide, the ultimate guide, you can get the link for that. Um, okay, perfect. So the other thing, the last thing you might wanna change is if you are in another country, you may wanna change your the locale. That's just for if you have, um, um, that's basically if you're using um, translated, whatever they call it, I'm trying to think what they call it, but anyway, translation files, then you'll set the default locale and then the fallback locale. So you might wanna change those as well. That's everything we've got. So let's go ahead and save and close that. Um, we've got that all complete. So we're all done with all that. 
And um, the last thing we want to do is just cache our configuration files. So we, if you guys know that in these configuration files, it's like looking for an ENV file. And if it doesn't have that, it falls back on this. And it, it's, you know, there's like multiple configuration files. They're all in their own separate file. We've got our auth.php, our app.php, our um, all of the different configuration files. And this takes time. Since you're using the configuration files with every single request, with every single... Um, time someone requests your website, you have to go through and parse your configuration files. It can take a lot of time. So what we'll do is we're gonna cache the PH or the configuration files so that it's really, really fast and doesn't really slow down our, our application anymore. So what we'll do is there's actually, again, an artisan command to do this. So we'll do PHP, oops, I need to be inside of my terminal. PHP artisan, artisan uh, config, um, and then cache like this. And what this will do is it actually, let's go ahead and click enter. What it actually does is it turns all those configurations into one file and like minifies it and then caches it. So it's really fast. So that's what this is gonna do. Now, the one thing you need to know about this is that now that you have a cached configuration file, every time you, if you, you shouldn't change configurations very often, but if you ever need to change a setting in your configuration file, or um, you're adding something new in your environment or something like that, you, you're going to need to recache this, okay? So you're gonna to need to run this command again, php artisan config cache. That way it recaches it because now um, it's gonna be using your cached file um, whenever it needs your configuration. So you can't just change, um, you know, like we did up here, you can't just change this config slash app because it probably won't take the effect. The, the effect won't, the change won't take effect is what I mean. Um, so you need to recache it so that then the changes can take effect. Okay, so that's basically what we need to do here. Um, that's quite literally, that's it. Um, the last thing, uh, we're done with basically our migrations. We're almost done with the application. The last thing we wanna do is just migrate our database, okay? So let's go ahead and run our migrations, PHP artisan migrate. And again, make sure inside of those that environment file you have your database you know, set up. So PHP artisan migrate, go ahead and click enter. And it will remind you whenever you're in production and you do PHP Artisan Migrate, it's gonna remind, make sure you actually wanna do it. And this is a good thing because um, if you, sometimes I'll have like multiple terminal windows open. I'll have one with my SSH in and then another one for my local computer. And if you accidentally did a migrate thinking you were doing it on your local computer, but you accidentally did it on your production, you could mess up your production app. So it's good that it reminds you and make sure you're sure that you wanna do it. In this case, we, we're sure we wanna run it. So let's do, um, let's type yes. And then it's gonna run the migrations, okay? So it ran all of our migrations. And now with that being complete, your application should be on the internet if you've uh, done everything correctly. Let's go ahead and just take a look at it. Let's go back over to Safari. Let's close this. And I'm going to uh, go back over here and just refresh. And now you can see that we've got our application online. We've got our blog. Um, all of these work, it's super fast. It's working really, really good. Um, now, the one thing you're gonna notice is we just barely ran the migrations. So we're not going to have a, um, we're not gonna have anything in our database. The database is completely empty. So if you wanna make, for example, let's say you need to make an, an admin user um, for, you know, into your database. The best way to do that is with PHP Artisan Tinker, okay? If you had a seed set up, you could run the seed. Um, like for example, in here, if you wanted, um, you could run PHP Artisan DB seed, and this could seed your database, but you have to have a seed file set up. Um, the other thing you can do is PHP Artisan Tinker, and we can create a quick user file through the command line. So let's go ahead and just do that real quick and make an admin file, because you're gonna usually need to do this um, the first time, the very first time you push to production. After that, you won't need to, because the database won't be messed up when you push changes to your server. So you're gonna do user equals new app user, um, and this is gonna create a new, a new user, and then we're going to do um, user name equals Alex Curtis, like that. Okay, cool. And then we're gonna do user email equals um, hello at devmarketer.io. And then we're going to do the password finally. So user um, password. And remember that we need to hash the password because this is storing it directly into our database. So we're gonna make a hash, oops, hash make and um, let's see, let's make the, I'm just gonna make my password password for now. Okay, it's a bad idea, but 
This is only for demonstration. I'm going to delete this in 10 seconds when we're done anyway. <laughs> so, okay, so now it made our password. So now we have our password, and then this is the hashed version of our password. And now we can just do user save just to make sure it gets input into the database. True. And now we're good to go. So um, we can do exit for good for exiting. So now if I come over here and I actually type in, now my user should be in the database. So now what we can do is let's do um, um, hello at devmarketer.io and then my password is password and click enter. And now you can see that it has my user account set up, Alex Curtis, and we can start creating blog posts just like that, okay? So that should, hopefully that showed you guys how you can set up a Laravel application from start to finish. Um, you learned how to deploy an application with a basic run-of-the-mill server. We added Git, we added everything. So hopefully you guys learned a lot from this. If you did, please make sure to like, favorite, and subscribe the video. Subscribing makes sure that you stay in touch with all the future videos that I got coming up. So love the subscribes, and of course, commenting down below or liking the video helps a ton with getting more traffic to this, um, to this video. So if you found it useful, then hopefully doing that kind of stuff will get more people on board so that they can find this video as well. Also, if you found this useful, I do recommend you go down to the description and look at the Dev Marketer Insider. This is an email. Um, this is an email list that I send out no more than once a week. No more spam. You can always unsubscribe, but you can sign up there to get news and updates all about all this type of stuff that may interest you. Okay, so that's all I got for you guys. I'm gonna see you guys in the next video.